Okay, thank you. I'd like to thank the organizers. They have done a marvelous job. Um, their generosity in time and attention to details and love for Gabber are something very impressive. I'd also like to thank Professor Gabber, with whom I have been in touch uh, probably in the last 10 years. Uh, we had a common interest in purity results. And <coughs> uh, this is joint work with Professor Gabber. manuscript, so I'll try to combine. And uh, <laughs> uh, I'd like to begin with an introduction. R is going to be a local regular ring, mixed characteristic. 0p and dimension d, which would like to be at least 2. And uh, we'll denote by x the spec of r. We'll also need the puncture spectrum, <coughs> the maximal ideal will be denoted by m sub r, the close point, and we'll also need the residue field. which is of characteristic P. So I'd like to begin right away with the definition, what we are talking about. We say R or X is A, P quasi healthy, If each PDB group over Y extends to X, and we have an analog notion uh, for abelian schemes, P healthy. If each Abelian scheme over y extends to x. Of course, in the a case, extends as a feasible group, and in the b case, extends as an abelian scheme. I'd like to mention a few things. Why do we care about such things? In 91, in the book, a little bit. Sure, thank you. Or maybe, oh, this doesn't go higher. Okay, then probably this is the maximum. In the book of Professor Faltings, and Chai, it was claimed basically that uh, <laughs> each R <laughs> is both. <laughs> and uh, definitely this is not okay. So there has been a mistake, and uh, there were at least two gaps, and probably some smaller problems. <laughs> this was pretty much after the work of Moret Bailey on an analog result for curves. So the intuition, if it works for curves, should kind of work for abelian schemes is quite tempting, but. It turned out uh, not to be uh, the case. And uh, second thing, <laughs> uh, that uh, if M script is a good moduli space, and uh, let's say that uh, X is P quasi healthy, Then these two together should imply that the y value points should be the same thing at x values points on extension result. 
And uh, in this way, one would like to prove the uniqueness of uh, good moduli spaces. Uh, such as uh, integral canonical models of Shimura varieties over some DVR V, which of course is of mixed characteristic, but uh, we want the index of ramification should be at the most P minus one. It's the most uh, we can do uh, about uh, getting some uh, uniqueness results. Uh, so this is why we, we like to come back and work again on this area is something you could say classically goes back to uh, back to 27 years but uh, because we have something which is not okay uh, we like to see what uh, can be done and of course the definition is much later uh, and <laughs> the word healthy was kind of trying uh, was going on sort of trying to model and ponder what's going on and what are could still be worked out. Now, simple thing is, uh, uh, we could say, uh, proposition one. We can state it in two parts. If D is equal to two, then, R is P quasi healthy if and only if we have a statement of the following type that for each complex of the form of this type, of course, of finite, flat, commutative <coughs> group schemes uh, annihilated by a power of p and I maybe like to give a quick name to this to make it shorter okay uh, over x so whenever we have such a complex star is a short exact sequence if and only if it's pulled back to the puncture spectrum is, is a short exact sequence. And uh, B, if we have uh, D greater or equal to three, then we are going to have basically only one implication. So what is behind the case D equal to two? Yes. Uh, is there an implication between the two notions of P healthy and P quasi healthy? Uh, that will be proposition two. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. So you see when D equal to two, if you have the category of this finite flat, I'm going to make it short, over x, we can restrict it to y, so we have a natural restriction functor. Uh, this is very well known, that there's going to be an isomorphism of categories, equivalence. an equivalence of categories, sure. And therefore, for d equal to two, uh, this implication is going to follow easily from the very definition of principal groups, where we have an inductive system and some short exact sequences uh, uh, are uh, supposed to, to be satisfied to, uh, to be indeed short exact sequences. Now. Uh, for d greater or equal to two, if you have a 
complex such that it's pulled back to y is a short exact sequence, but, okay, so it's a short exact sequence. Oops, sorry, this has been inverted. And uh, we have a theorem of right now, right now uh, from the book of uh, Breen, Bertelot, and Messick, uh, that uh, we can embed G into the feasible group on a billion scheme. And uh, we can restrict it to Y, and we can form this quotient. This is going to extend to an abelian scheme over x if and only if the complex is exact. In other words, h becomes a, a close-up scheme. Or subgroup scheme. And uh, of course, this means that star is going to be a short exact sequence. So this proposition kind of give us a, uh, an idea what we would like to do in order to find counterexamples. We could try to look at a situation where when we have the x, let's say in the FPPF topology of k and h mapping by restriction into this x1, of k over y, h over y, as long as this is not onto, then we can find the class here, which uh, can be used to define first a short exact sequence over y, is going to extend to a complex over uh, x, because uh, we are in the case d equal to 2. Okay? So therefore, if this is not subjective, Automatically, we have a counterexample. Counterexample to the claim, right? Because from our point of view, it would be uh, examples, basically. So that's uh, uh, what one can try to, to begin with to find counterexamples. And I mentioned to you that this is a proposition two as well, that uh, if R is P quasi healthy, then it is P, uh, it is a, a quasi healthy, oops, boy, yeah, uh, it's, uh, I have a, oh, it's fine, it's okay, it's fine. Uh, it is P healthy. I had the impression that I forgot something. If it is, uh, then it is P healthy. This is essentially done in the book. Uh, all the ideas are there. Because the argument aims to so much generality, it's not that easy to follow. There is a more recent proof of uh, mine from 2004, but entirely insight is much shorter, of course, because we just concentrate it in what we need it. So definitely we have uh, this uh, implication. Okay. And uh, the next I'd like to start mentioning the first counterexample. Which is due to Raynaud, Professor August, and Professor Gabbar. <laughs> well, okay. So, <laughs> I think it's due to Raynaud who mentioned it to Professor August, who mentioned a few details to Professor Gabber, and then a letter of Professor Gabber to Professor August. May I say, I'd like to say something about it because of Raynaud. <laughs> so I was at the Institute and I was working on this question for, I needed it for some reason, okay. which isn't so important, and Mumford came to give a talk. So I asked Mumford if it was true, that, that is, every billion scheme could, could be extended in this context. And Mumford, 
after the next talk, he came up to me and said, you ruined this talk because I spent the whole time thinking about this question, and I couldn't solve it. So later, Raynaud came, and I asked Raynaud, and he made a counter example very quickly. <laughs> wow. OK, so this is. <laughs> OK, so uh, the letter is from 92. So this must be a talk in 91, something like that, OK? So <laughs> OK, so uh, we take d equal to 2. Uh, we take r to be strictly Henselian. And uh, we want uh, each irreducible component of the closed locus of p to B of multiplicity, uh, of multiplicity divisible by p minus 1. And we want at least two of them. Yes, so each, so there are at least two of them. And the letter even gives an explicit example. We can take the ring of bit vectors of an algebra closure of a finite field. Formal power series into variables. And we divide by an equation. We take two, exactly two reducible components. And multiplicity has to be divisible by p minus 1. The smallest is p minus 1. Now, what uh, is going to be in this case? h is going to be z mod pz. And uh, k is going to be mu sub p. So I repeat that uh, we're looking at uh, a specific x1 map. So we're looking at mu p, z mod p z. Okay. Uh, because it's strictly Henselian, this is going to be 0. And uh, it maps by restriction. And we want in, uh, now with enough in order, we don't want to be subjective. So therefore, this being 0, we want to have something here which is non-zero. Now, such short exact sequences are uh, splitting locally in the tal topology. So therefore, this becomes an H0 at tal uh, over y of the home from mu p z mod pz. Because I put y there, I'm not going to repeat it here. Uh, you're, you're with H1. It's H1. Uh, uh, here, I mean H1. Yes, and z mod pz. Uh, x1, x1, OK. Yes, x1, sure, thank you. OK. So uh, yes, it's x1 as above, OK? So we go to h1. Uh, this is easy to uh, compute. We can consider the yota from y minus the closed locus of p equal to 0 open into y. So therefore, we're going to have uh, yota lower shriek of z mod pz. Uh, I'll mention in a second that this condition are going to imply that we're going to have a primitive uh, root of a unity of order p inside the ring. And uh, so we can rewrite it down like that. We also have a short exact sequence. In the, on the tal topos over y. And here we have the irreducible components of uh, v of p equal to 0. There are s of them. As we mentioned, is at least 2. And therefore, we get zpz over this 
generic points in characteristic P. So this is short exact sequence. So we can use it uh, to compute the H1 et al. is mapping into H1 et al of Y Z mod PZ, which uh, due to the purity is going to be zero. Okay. Uh, and therefore, it's uh, going to be isomorphic with the co kernel. We get at the level of H zeros. Okay. And uh, that exam, I going from one to S, um, you can say eta i z mod p z, and this is isomorphic with f sub p to the power s minus one, and is different from zero. So this completes the uh, counter example. So next we'd like to move towards the classification uh, for d equal to two. It's a complete classification in the Hanselian case. In the non-Hanselian case, we have some partial results. It's not that easy to build up finite flat group schemes over, let's say, <laughs> finite regular over Z, uh, Z localized P. So therefore, uh, passing down from the Hanselian case to the general case, we need some more work. Okay. So I would like to begin with the CRM. This is the CRM. Okay. So I'll need some notation. Uh, for the completion. The completion is going to look as follows, divided by an element f, a regular element. And the theorem is in three parts. The first part is due to myself and Singh in 2010 which basically says that if f doesn't belong to the ideal generated by p, the x to the power p, y to the power p, and this product, then r is p quasi healthy. The b part which is uh, due to Professor Gabber and myself. This is one of the manuscripts we are talking, which is complete in the Hanselian case, but needs some little bit more work in the non-Hanselian case. So therefore, we are going to assume that R is Hanselian, and F does belong to this ideal. Okay. So in this case, we like to say something more. This has implication as we can see in different kind of cohomologies, and therefore it's kind of good to say some more details. So in this case, there is going to exist a G finite flat over x with its special fiber connected such that we have a couple of more properties. Okay. The first property, uh, because in the case of short exact sequences, we can just restrict uh, to the epimorphism part. So there is a homomorphism from G to mu P, we like to keep the same mu P, such, uh, which is not epi, not epi, not epimorphism, but uh, let's give a name to it, alpha. But uh, when restricted to alpha, 
it does become an epimorphism. Second, the order of G is either p to the power 2 or p to the power 3. And the third thing, we can say something about H as well. H is, uh, uh, how can we define the H? Of course, it's going to be the extension to X of the kernel of alpha sub y. Okay, so we can define it uh, directly, but I'm keeping the same notations. H is either a form, we cannot make it all the time z mod pz. In the previous case, it was possible because of zeta sub p being there. So it's either a form of z mod pz or uh, bt1 of height 2 and dimension 1. Uh, whose fiber over k is uh, super singular. Super singular bt1. And of course, if you combine a and b, what one gets that in dimension two, uh, suppose R is Henselian, then R is P quasi healthy if and only if F doesn't belong there, or sometimes it's convenient to do the reduction mode P of F. Uh, F bar doesn't belong to the ideal generated by X to the power P, Y to the power P, X to the power P minus one, Y to the power P minus one which is in an ideal of this ring of formal power series. It's not. not. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Thank you. And F bar depends only on R up to automorphisms and also up to units. Uh, there's a way to <laughs> multiply by units because we're dealing with an ideal. Okay. And uh, we call it the koan element of R, and it can be defined in arbitrary dimension, and I repeat is unique up to units plus automorphisms. Okay. So this is a complete classification, and uh, what is the essence of the B part? Part of the A part is also going to show up uh, when we go to the proof of uh, uh, this proposition three. Okay. Uh, we like to do it uh, more general. So let our script be a Henselian local ring of uh, residue field of characteristic P. So suppose there is elements x, y in the maximal ideal of R script, elements a, b in the ring R, and element c, which is either zero or a unit. That's kind of a major restriction. We denote the units by u. Sars that we have an equation of the following form. So we can express P in terms of X and Y and these coefficients ABC uh, as follows. So then what is the conclusion in this case? Then there is going to exist G script finite flat over uh, X script spec of R script, okay, such that 
the following properties hold. Uh, first of all, G sub K is connected. And moreover, the analogs of I2 and 3 are going to hold. Okay. First is that we are going to have an alpha. I'm not going to change the letter now from G, from G script to mu sub P, which is not epi. But it's going to be epi when restricted. to X script minus the spectrum uh, where X, uh, uh, X and Y are both zero. Okay, so this is the first condition. Second condition, it refers to the order. We're going to have the order of G equal with P to the power two if C is a unit and of order p to the power 3 if c is equal to 0. And the third condition is going to say something about the kernel. Uh, of course, the kernel is going to define only initially over this one, but it's going to extend. So we can speak about H script. And H script is either a form of Z mod PZ, uh, of course, it has to be the order P to the power 2, or again, uh, BT1 of, the, of dimension 1 and high 2, and the same properties that the fiber over the, the field, the residue field, we can denote it again by K, is going to be connected and is going to be super singular. Okay? And there is also a complement of it. If by chance the pips minus one root of C exists in the ring, uh, then uh, H is going to be actually isomorphic with Z mod PZ. So we don't have to kind of uh, uh, go around for a form of Z mod PZ, but actually it's going to be Z mod PZ. <laughs> now how one would prove such a proposition? <clears throat> so I would like to concentrate on the case when R script is complete and regular. And moreover, we have X and uh, Y as uh, part of a of a regular system of parameters. So we can write down our script <coughs> uh, something which involves formal power series in a finite number of variables. Besides x and y, we need z1, z2, zd minus 2. And we have to divide by a similar f. And that f is basically nothing else but the equation uh, which uh, we have here, which I could rewrite it down again. Okay. So next one we'd like to consider a frame. We can consider S script. We can choose a nine, nice Frobenius lift of it. For instance, as this uh, sigma of t is t to the power p for all t running through x, y, z1 up to z, d minus 2, and extending a Frobenius of the cone ring of k. And uh, one builds up in this way what uh, Tsing and uh, Lau are calling a frame. We have the ideal f. We have our script, and then we have uh, the sigma, 
we also have a, a sigma dot and we have sigma of f. So this is going to be a frame in the sense of Lao 2010 and previous works of Sink as well. Many frames have been used, but uh, this is basically the one we're going to need uh, here. And uh, sigma dot, it goes from F to S script, and it's going to be given by some formula uh, as follows. Uh, it's not going to be important uh, for uh, this talk to know much uh, about uh, these frames. And uh, we're just going to use nilpotent Broy modules. This is the terminology Sink and myself have introduced uh, on our work generalizing uh, uh, Broil's conjecture and uh, uh, Kissing's result on the classification of finite flat group schemes over a uh, disk evaluation ring of mixed characteristic, complete and uh, with resi a perfect residue field. We work for families where we had uh, uh, Eisenstein element in multiple variables, and Lau was able to do the general case uh, following quite close uh, the work of Sink and myself. So now I'm going to introduce some matrices just to kind of get a flavor uh, what is involved. Subcase uh, when we have C equal to zero. Uh, we'll also need to introduce uh, S script divided by P. So this is going to be So we like to start with a matrix, which is three by three, with coefficients in S, which has the following property. Okay, and with the determinant of A naught being equal with F bar to the power two, with it we can construct uh, nilpotent Broglie modules that follows. We view S, three, S to the power three as a free module over S of rank three and so on. This will be the Frobenius pullback. We choose the standard basis on both sides and we take the linear map uh, which defines a naught. Here we're just going to choose the multiplication by F. And uh, here is going to be the map which uh, will be given by this matrix. And here we have the piece power the, from Frobenius of the previous map we had as a vertical left arrow. It's easy to check that uh, the identity we have there builds up this commutative diagram. And uh, basically the theory of Lau generalizing the work of Sink and myself uh, allows us to pass from such a diagram to an alpha, which is nothing else but the one we want from G-script from UP. In this case, uh, G is going to have order p to the power three. Now, the question is how one builds such a matrix, uh, which will have all the properties, right? Uh, how one builds such a matrix A, uh, not. Uh, one can work covariantly or contravariantly, and uh, therefore, to make it uh, exactly as in the case of Lau, we are going to first define another matrix and then kind of take a joint and the transpose.
And uh, one needs to choose alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, so that the determinant of A is exactly F bar. And there are several ways to do that. Uh, one relatively nice is to take alpha 3 equal to 1. Alpha 1 is going to be minus B times 1 plus x to the power P minus 1, y to the power P minus 1, everything to the power minus 1. And alpha 2 is going to be A bar uh, times 1 plus alpha 1 y to the power p minus 1, where in the local case, x and y are in the maximal ideal, so, so therefore all these inverses are going to exist. And now one takes b the uh, joint of a, And A naught is going to be the transpose of B. One has nice identities, A B times B A. So the last, uh, the last row of the matrix is uh, X. Uh, it stops here. I, I, this is related to the second term. Right? I hope this is clear. This is not, uh, not uh, has to be three terms. <laughs> okay? So this is going to be nothing else but a bar times the identity matrix 3 by 3, and the same thing, A naught, B naught, and B naught, A naught. And of course, determinant of A naught is a determinant of B, and determinant of B becomes easily computable as F bar to the power 3 uh, divided by determinant of A, so therefore becomes the second power. And uh, the fact that we have such a thing implies that the co-kernels of these two maps are uh, annihilated by F bar. It's trivial in this case. And because of the determinant of A naught being equal to F, the same thing holds for the map divide, uh, defined by A naught. And uh, also, if one look at A mod xy, uh, what we get, we're going to get uh, zeros on the first two rows. And therefore, sorry, first two columns. And therefore, it's going to be of rank 1, which is going to imply that the joint also uh, is going to be uh, 0, mod x and y. So therefore, when we take the transpose a naught, we're definitely going to get something which is nilpotent. Now, we have also the subcase uh, where c is a unit. And the same story is going to be, except that we can make it uh, two by two matrices, which is very good. Everything else is going to be the same. Multiplication by F bar. Here is going to be the matrix uh, A1. And here we are going to have just xy. And of course, x to the power p, y to the power p. And I can also write down who is A1 in this case. A bar, uh, uh, here I didn't put, uh, uh, I mean, I put A bar here. A bar and B bar means reduction. Uh, I mean, would be basically lifts to S which modulo R are going to be those elements. So A bar, B bar. Okay. And here, uh, you see, we already lift it here when we wrote it down f in this way. We implicitly lift it and the lift we denoted it in the same way. But when we take a modulo p, uh, we are going to denote it by bar. Okay? So let's complete the matrix. Plus c bar, y to the power p minus 1, a bar y, and b bar x, and here b bar y plus c uh, x to the power p minus 1. And in this case, the determinant of a1 is going to be c bar times f bar, but c is a unit, so everything is going to be 
uh, annihilated the co-kernel or what we get here is going to be an annihilated by f bar because this is a unit. Okay, so this is basically how uh, one proves this case and the general case is uh, pretty much standard. One considers some uh, maybe you can push this one up first. Uh, universal rings, which are going to be regular over Z localized P, so for which the approximation, Artin approximation, is going to be true. So therefore, from the completion, we can go down uh, to the Henselization. And uh, because we have universal rings, the general case of an Henselian is going to be pulled back of the localization, Henselization or localizations of the universal uh, rings. So of course, the universal rings are kind of obvious. I'm just going to mention, for instance, when C is equal to 0, uh, we can put Zp. We can put two variables and divide by <laughs> f, where C is basically 0, so we get rid of it. Uh, it's going to look, of course, we, can, we have to put also AB. Let me not forget that part. And something similar when C is involved. This would be a universal ring. And uh, all our scripts are going to be basically pullbacks of Henselization or localizations of this ring. So that's how the proof uh, goes for the P uh, for dimension 2. So now let's move to higher dimension uh, 4. Let's understand what is the trouble for dimension 3. This is the uh, second uh, gap, you could say, in the book I have mentioned before. So let's uh, consider the simplest case, where R is W of K. Doesn't matter if it is algebraically closed. Perfect, so that I can keep writing W instead of C. Uh, we can put two variables. Uh, so it's of dimension 3. And of course, we can consider quotients of it, where we divide by powers of y. r divided by y to the power n. Of course, it's regular only for n equal to 1. But what we define p quasi healthy would make sense. In any case, we have something which is a local ring. And what is the fact here, which is surprising, that our, our script, um, actually, uh, I'm sorry, R tilde, just R tilde, I don't need script here, uh, sub n is P quasi healthy if and only if n is equal to 1. So let's try to understand a little bit. What is the problem? We can even kind of uh, consider counterexamples which are coming from elliptic curves. Uh, let's use x as a variable. Uh, of course, spec of it, sorry. Uh, we can uh, get a map from spec of r tilde n where we invert x. And at the level of the rings, we like to map x into x plus x inverse times y. Or y to the power n minus 1, just to kind of basically the last uh, one, which is uh, non-zero. We have here, even an abelian scheme, but we can concentrate on this feasible group. It pulls. Uh, back to a visible group here. If you look at the puncture spectrum, it's going to be the union of what we have over there, the localization. And we're going to have some uh, something coming from spec, some locker ring O, Y, 
y divided by y to the power n. And this O is a DVR of characteristic 0. So therefore, by triviality, because we have nilpotent, something, uh, what we get here, it's a PZB group, which is the tal. And therefore, what we get over O automatically extends to this uh, part, which has nilpotent elements. And therefore, the PZB group, which we initially get it here from the pullback, is going to extend to all of it. But it's very easy to see that there's no way, because of this uh, x inverse, uh, there's no way it's going to map into r tilde n. There's no way to factorize it. So therefore, where the mistake in the book shows up, OK, r tilde 1 is p quasi healthy. But when we like to leave to r tilde 2, the argument of, OK, tor source or peaceable groups doesn't work out. And the reason doesn't work out, OK, they are of dimension 2. But all the deformation theories we have learned for predictable groups require a power of p uh, to be 0. And therefore, when we divide by some power of p, no matter which power we choose, we get dimension 1. So there's no way we can, outside something of dimension 1, outside of the puncture spectrum, we can not extend it. Okay, so this is the problem. And therefore, Many claims in the literature that uh, there are p quasi healthy schemes in dimension three or oops no uh, this one I need and this one lower thank you or the other way <laughs> no it's, you're fine you're correct okay. So I have enough time to at least say what's happening in dimension 3 or higher. And Strictly speak, did you define quasi healthy only for regular rings though? Well, I mentioned that uh, it can be defined for any local ring, right? And I also use it here. When I made the last uh, fact uh, stated above, I meant it in the same definition. OK. But as you see, as soon as you have nilpotent elements, there are no much hopes to get p quasi healthy. So you can define it, but it's not going to be something very useful. OK. So now let's move to uh, dimension 3 or higher. What is the main result for d greater or equal to 3? We have theorem 2. OK. So of course, suppose d greater or equal to 3. <coughs> and similarly, we can consider the completion. And the completion. Uh, we can write it down, x1 up to xd divided by some element. Okay, we can denote it by f again. Okay, so suppose d and we write, right? This is actually not an assumption, but and we write it in this way. If f, f doesn't belong to the ideal generated by p, the p's powers, and the uh, 2p minus 2 power of the ideal generated by x1, xd, then r is p quasi healthy. This includes all the formal power series over a DVR of index of ramification at most p minus 1. So we recover everything we need to get a new proof of integral canonical models of Shimura varieties. Uh, the first proof being by Tsing uh, and myself, which found a way to go around this difficulty for d greater or equal to 3. 
So I'd like to say something about what are the new ideas uh, involved in proving this. There are basically three of them. It's a result of Raynaud, which I don't know if has been used <laughs> since 74 before. And uh, also, we aim to get good sections. Of course, the good sections are required for d equal to 3, so that we can use the results for d equal to 2. And so there's a very nice constancy theorem. And also we have quite a lot of more or less standard standard tools. There are plenty of them. For instance, we can work out in the faithfully flat topology and we can assume that uh, we're going to have an algebraically closed field, K, which is also uncountable. We really need it in the argument. And, uh, okay, so x1, xd over f it becomes our r. We don't need to complete it because we can uh, use uh, faithfully flat uh, descent. And also we can actually reduce to case d equal to 3 because, okay, the difficulty I explained to you for d equal to 3 are not anymore. The Grothendieck uh, messing deformation theories take care of the passage from the, uh, dimension 3 to dimension 4 and so on. Okay? And uh, uh, the good sections are required for d equal to 3, and that's where we need uh, k equal with k bar to be uncountable. So now I have two, three more minutes. I'd like to say a little bit more, uh, first of all, a more general statement than this. If R is as in theorem 2, then a feasible group over the field of fractions of R extends to R if and only if it extends to all DVRs, which are, of course, local rings of R. It extends to all DVRs of X. So this would be basically what would say kind of a strong uh, P uh, P healthy <laughs> sort of because I define P quasi healthy, but this will be basically P <laughs> P healthy. This is why the quasi shows up. We like to kind of move towards the global results, and uh, one reduces. Now, what is nice about this condition here that this is uh, sorry here this is stable under generalizations. Uh, there are very nice tools of proving this, which I don't think they are that standard, but uh, anyway. And because of that, the two statements are equivalent. They're going to be equivalent. So now, just uh, maybe because it's such an honor to remember right now, uh, I'd like to briefly keep your attention for one or two more minutes just to say uh, where at least Raynaud's theorem pops up, and which one, <laughs> because he has so many. <laughs> so what is the idea? The one considers the blow up of x. Along the close point, which is the maximal ideal. Uh, this, can, this works for all D. So we have uh, a projective space sitting inside. It's going to have a generic point. And it's a DVR, the locker ring.
And of course, how one starts? We start with uh, d over y, a feasible group. And one, we like to use the blow up somehow to show that d extends to x. And the first thing is to show that d extends to p. This is eta, any point. No, 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 no. Z instead of something bottom line. Ulta dita. Z. P depends on Z. Sorry. Upstairs in Z eta. Uh, yes, in Z. Of course. Oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. This is, yes, yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Okay. So we have this piece of a group. And the first thing we like to extend to P, how we would like to do, P dominates R. But in between, there are many rings. Uh, let's write it the derivative of the spectra. OK. And now we can choose P1 to be of dimension 2. So that pullback of y would be sort of y prime. So therefore, all the truncations of d are going to first uh, extend to p prime and thus also to p by pullback. And now the result is that if we have a visible group over the field of fraction of a DVR of mixed characteristic, and if all truncation extend to finite flat group schemes over the disk evaluation ring, then even the PZB group extends. So you need something on the ramification? Ah. No, no, you don't need anything. Yes, this is uh, uh, in the paper of 74 of uh, uh, Professor Raino. And uh, I don't know if it has been used before. If anyone is aware of any other application of this old result. Uh, it was a complement where he did all those extensions when a PZB group over the field of fraction extends to P, to the DVR. Uh, and at the end, he has this very nice complement uh, as application of minimal and kind of uh, maximal sort of extensions of uh, some given finite flat group schemes. So this is, first of all, that's how we win. We win all the DVRs of Z. And uh, the section has the role of finding a good way to divide by one variable, uh, which is going to avoid all the sort of bad points about which we do not know what's going to happen and we can apply dimension two. And I would have liked to say something more about the constancy theorem, which is a very nice result, but uh, that's what the time permits. Thank you for today. Questions? So what was the good section? <laughs> so basically, yes, sure. You see, once we have a PDV group which extends to P, we're going to concentrate, I repeat, uh, for D equal to 3. So therefore, it's going to exist as a band inside the projective space, which now becomes a projective uh, plane, finite set, so that we have a finite flat commutative group scheme over Z without SN. Because it extends also in dimension two, so therefore what we are losing just a finite number of points. Now we're going, to, uh, and we can make them nicely, one included in the other. So we can speak about S infinite, the union. And uh, the notion of Barsotti take group, it's open. So therefore we can also find uh, T1, T2, and so on, Tn which are going to be finite, uh, mean union, finite union of curves. Uh, and uh, we get T infinite for their union. Everything is sitting inside the projective plane. And the section refers that uh, uh, we like to divide the ring R by an equation of the form T1x1 plus T2x2 plus t3, x3. We can assume that x1, x2, x3 are coming from regular parameters with t1, t2, t3 uh, belonging to 
uh, the ring of width vectors, at least want to be a unit because we want to divide a regular parameter so we get something of dimension two. And uh, in the blow up, we get the strict transform, this up T, which produces a P1, so this becomes a P2. So what we want, we want P1 of K to avoid this countable set of points. And we also want the generic point should avoid T infinite. And this is possible as long as we go to uncountable K. And this is a relatively standard argument to kind of avoid these things. It's uh, uh, not uh, that difficult. And now when you pull back the principal group over Y, we have a YT here, which is the nothing else but the puncture disk. The result on dimension two, uh, we can assure that X sub T is like what we have in dimension two P quasi healthy. Uh, because this condition is also well behaved with uh, uh, suitable sections. You, you have, if you look here, 2p minus 2 would be exactly p minus 1 plus p minus 1. So we are in the right range. And uh, we have then a feasible group over yt. And it's going to uh, it, uh, pull back to zt. It's going to be the pullbacks of all the finite uh, group schemes we get over z minus sn. And uh, that's basically how one can conclude that actually this is a finite set. This becomes a finite set because over P1, uh, P1KT, which depends on T, we get a principal group. So therefore, this curve is going to avoid all the T infinite. And now you're in P2. If a curve avoids P1, it has to be the empty curve, basically. <laughs> so therefore, this becomes a finite set. And that's basically. Uh, where the constancy theorem uh, is going to follow. That if you have a curve in the projective space and we have this finite uh, Barsotti take groups, which pull back to something which become constant over a curve, then automatically are going to extend to the whole projective space and it's going to be constant. It's a very kind of nice result uh, using the uh, paper of uh, Hironaka and Matsumura on uh, rational <laughs> formal functions and uh, goes back to 68 and uh, that's a very delicate uh, work and uh, that's uh, basically what uh, goes next. We're going to get something constant about P2K and then we are going to do the completion of P2K inside Z. All of them are going to be constant and then of course we end up also using the algebraization theorem of Grothendieck and so on. The whole machinery basically, Grothendieck messing and so on. But those are more standard. And clearly this is what is the section. We want to avoid the set S infinite and the generic point should avoid T infinite. And then you win the game basically. Yes. More questions? <laughs> okay, so, so sorry. You're, you're not on your seat, so I didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> so this, uh, this result of Renault, and, uh, it's not in the, the PPP. It is, it yeah, is, it is, it is. No, that's why I mentioned the same year, 74. Yes, it is there. Yes, yes. And I have not seen it applied. You know. Yes, you, 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 yeah, other results, of course. Yes, you kind of, yes. So, yes. so it, it has been a lot of work altogether, you know, with gracious margin comes 60 pages to fix one line from the book. <laughs> so, so I hope you enjoy something which is classical. Uh, it's very nice to have new theories, but sometimes we have to go back and fix old theories. So <laughs> what to do? So. so it seems that Ofra doesn't have a question on the paper joint with him himself. <laughs> 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 so it, it's a mature word. So <laughs> def <laughs> definitely we have worked out all details. It's not like work in progress or something, <laughs> you know, just starting. So. Let us thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm. Thank you.